What's up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown. This time I'm going to talk about this LeBron James graphic I created um, just because he's LeBron James. So um, I found this original photo of LeBron that I wanted to use and then found some additional photos to add as sort of texture or to add more contrast to the image um, with some other fun halftone dots in here that I'm going to show you what I did to make this. So I'll start with the background. So this background is just black or dark gray. So then what I did was I added this purple box. Um, for some reason I filled it in and then masked it. You can just make a box. I added a couple overlays to it. So this is overlaying at the bottom at 50% with the same purple just to add a little bit more color to it. And then I added a little bit of highlight from the side. I uh, just made it, drew a gradient of the same purple and set that to screen. To add a little bit more detail, instead of just having a plain purple background, I've got this sort of nice gradient going through this uh, background purple. So I went ahead and added this text of LeBron. So this is Armada Thin Compressed. I'm going to the font. Um, escape. There we go. So then what I did was I added a yellow mask to the bottom of that, sort of like a sunrise coming from the bottom of the LA. Just wanted to add a little bit more of their colors to this graphic. Um, so then what I wanted to do was, let's see here. So then I have this photo of LeBron, this big head image photo of LeBron. So. I have this initial photo I found. This is what the photo looked like initially with some clipping I've done to it. I um, went ahead and masked that to the background. That's why he's cut off here at the bottom. So this is the original photo. And then this is what the photo looked like after initial edits. So let me pop this open. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I went ahead and used FH Learn or Flurns frequency separation to do some edits. I went ahead and did some dodge and burning to it. But then I went ahead and used some um, actions I have to do the edits. So some camera raw, some sharpening, a little bit of saturation boosting, uh, a little bit of darkening in the face in certain areas, and a little bit of lightening in the face as well. And then I grouped that all together. So if you're interested in um, editing something like this, I do have actions available that make it look like this. Um, so you can go ahead and check out the actions I have available in my shop. Um, that'll get you most of the way. Uh, that'll get you pretty much it to look like this. And then you can add in some other additional details. So you can see it takes a lot sometimes to make something look like this. It's not always one click, but a lot of it is one click and then adding in a little bit more contrast to the photo. So this is what the photo looks like. Uh, I went ahead and masked out a little bit of it. So there were some edges on here I didn't like, so I went ahead and masked those out even more. I then went ahead and added this blank layer that apparently does absolutely nothing. I can't see it doing anything. I don't remember what this is, does or did. Let me see what it is. Ah, okay. So it's doing something over here. Well, what is it doing? It's adding a little bit of yellow to the side. So it's fixing some of the yellow that was down there that might have been a little green. I then went ahead and added a hue and saturation layer to fix some of the purple. So I masked just around where the purple was because you can see it's a little blue. So I wanted to match the background, so that's why I went ahead and tweaked the hue and saturation. Uh, went to the magentas, I guess, selected this color with the eyedropper and then tweaked the saturation and hue to match the background. And then went ahead and brightened up the top of his head. Because you can see there's a little bit of a black border that you can see it looks a little unnatural. So I wanted to add a little bit of highlight back into that. And then I went ahead and fixed this weird cold spot on his neck and on the top of his head. I went ahead and warmed that up. I probably went ahead and selected part of the color that was actually on his body and uh, then painted it back on. 
So that's how we have LeBron's head. So then we have, let's see here. So I've got this other photo here, of LeBron doing a LeBron jumper is what I have it. So this is the original photo. I did the same edits to this photo to turn it into this. So you can see drastic change, a little bit darker, so I think I brightened it up a little bit. Um, took the hue and saturation, the master hue and saturation for that layer. Lightened it up a little bit, add a little bit more saturation. And then I darkened up some of the shadows a little bit and lightened up some of the other parts that are highlights as well. So I've got Le LeBron there. Um, I've got this rectangle on the right behind LeBron. And all this is, it's a, just a plain yellow rectangle. Um, but then I went ahead and took that photo of LeBron and made it a halftone dot pattern. So it's just these made up of halftone dots now. And I went ahead and masked that to this area just for some texture. So I thought that looked cool using something I had in there uh, that you might not think it's the same photo, but I wanted to use it again to add texture to that. So we've got those. Um, then we've got this image of LeBron pointing. Again, this is what the original photo looked like. And I did some edits, the same edits, and now it looks like this. Then I went ahead and tweaked some saturation in it. So you can see a little bit in the body here. I wanted to match, I wanted to try and match all of these yellows together. So that's what a lot of that is. Then I tweaked his skin a little bit, um, tweaked the color of that, and then tweaked a couple other things. So we really, so I brightened up the yellows a little bit again to try and match all of these yellows together. Um, that's something that can be a little difficult is if you use multiple images and they have different warmths or they're slightly different colors. You know, like in baseball, if you've got a white or gray jersey, depending on the lighting, it might be warmer, it might be colder. This is a good way to go and use the hue and saturation or um, the channel mixer or different filters. There's a bunch of different adjustments you can use to make things match up. So we've got the three LeBrons here. Um, I went ahead, threw my logo here in the bottom right hand corner, important. Uh, then I have all these dot squares over here. So these are the same LeBron image. So it's this same image. I went ahead and just made a bunch of squares, evened them all out. Um, these are, there's 17 of them to note 17 seasons LeBron's been in the league. And I just have the texture moves around in different spots. So they're all showing different textures um, for each of the years. Uh, there's a lot to, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here, but it's all the same. It's just a yellow square with that same dot pattern masked to it. Then I've got some trophies down here at the bottom. Um, they're just vector trophies I made or found that have colors on them that look like the championships he's won, the MVP trophies, or the finals MVP trophies that he had. Pretty simple. I'm not going to dive into that. They're just vector shapes. Then in the top left, I have just a crown logo I put in the center here. And then is, I just have King moving up from the bottom and James moving up from the side with some spacing in it, just as a, a nice little um, accent piece to the side. And then I have some texture on top of all of this. So I have this photo of some this piece of paper that I inverted and turned a gradient map onto it. So I wanted to have some of the white grain from that. Once I inverted it, the white grain to be showing up on top. So I think I have that duplicated twice. Is this the same image or is this a different? So this is a different image of some old cardboard vintage looking stuff that I inverted, made it black and white, sent it to screen to add a little bit of texture back into the graphic. And that's then what I did with this image here. Inverted it, set it to screen, put a black and white gradient map on top of it. And the original image of this looks like this. So I find a lot of paper textures that have like some, some aging or creases or colors to it to add a little bit of texture back into graphics I think as well. So then this is where a lot of the edit changing happens. So the lookups and dots. So 
I have a channel mixer layer on here set to, with the output channel set to gray. And when I turn on, I have the gray reduced in the red and boosted in the blue and the green. But basically, if you look at it, you can see it adds some contrast to it. So play around with some of these functions. The channel mixer, you know, if I move the greens down, it looks like that if I brighten them up. And that's pretty much how you can come um, and see what is happening. So it's adjusting the, the grays and the lightness in these specific layers. So in the red, which is a lot of his face and his skin, it's darkening up certain areas. So I have that channel mixer. Then I have a color lookup of Foggy Night, which darkens things up a little bit. I've got 2395 color lookup set on top of it to 40%. And then I have this channel mixer, which does this, which is tweaking a lot of the colors. So this gives it more of a retro sort of Miami Vice vibe with how the colors change. And to do that, I went into the greens and set it to 50% and 50%. So this generally would be set to 100 and 0. So it's saying that um, in the green channel we have 100% green. So in the green channel I'm saying it has 50% green. And then in the green channel I'm boosting the blues to be 50% as well, which is tweaking the colors to look like this. Then I went ahead and added a hue and saturation layer to tweak the yellows even further. So the yellows I change the hue. I thought it was probably too orange still, so I wanted to make it more yellow. So I went ahead and tweaked the yellows a little bit, changed the hue. Then what I did was I took this whole graphic, made a new smart object of it, and turned it into a bunch of halftone dots since I used halftone dots previously in the design. Oops. So I went ahead and overlaid that on top, uh, setting it to soft light for the blending mode and set it to 33%. And that is the result. So uh, this graphic was fun to do because uh, I haven't done many LeBron graphics. Everybody loves LeBron. Um, so I wanted to do something a little different with this. So really what we did here you know, was a lot of editing with the images itself, using the channel mixer a couple times to tweak the overall color of the images. And if you put these channel mixers on the top layers and they affect everything below it, you know, it really glues things together. I get a lot of questions on how to make things look realistic or um, how to blend things together with backgrounds. And a lot of the times it's these top lookups, color lookups, new saturation layers and channel mixer layers that glue everything together. So, I mean, you see, if I turn this off, you know, this graphic's okay, it's nothing special. But then when I have these other layers on it, it really just adds that additional effect to it. Uh, gives it a little something extra special. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you learned something from this. If there's something that stood out to you that you learned, go ahead and drop a comment below and let me know. I love hearing um, how these help you guys out. Um, other than that, um, drop me other comments on tutorials or other breakdowns you want to see me do. Um, and if that's it, just make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.